mass suicide adhere to the Mayan calendar, which predicts the end of time to occur on the 21st of December of this year. This year. This year. The, uh, the, the bulk of the work uh, is picks up basically about half the way through the Escape from L.A. sequence. Uh, we actually pick up with a nice shot uh, flying over the uh, golf course that's at the base of the Santa Monica Airport in which you see a nice big crack uh, open up in several houses and trees and whatnot fall in. Um, and then uh, basically it picks up at the airport and uh, from there that leads into the, uh, the actual collapse of the runway and the enormous fissure that opens up and kind of the flight through that. And then uh, they emerge, of course, into downtown and fly through, and eventually ends up with the uh, the last two shots, seeing California more or less sliding off into the ocean. And uh, that that chunk defines the majority of what we did. We did do a little bit uh, with Washington D.C. with some ash shots, and I think we uh, uh, we did the uh, uh, Washington Monument uh, collapsing. But uh, the vast majority of everything was in the the latter half of the Los Angeles sequence. California is going down. God, you sound like a crazy person. The governor just said we're fine now. The guy's an actor. He's reading a script. Well, mostly uh, data load. Uh, you're talking about a tremendous number of uh, buildings uh, and structures, uh, large-scale landscapes and whatnot that were crumbling. So most of this was an exercise in trying to uh, apply you know, the rigid body type techniques and, and various things uh, to just uh, very, very large-scale scenes, large numbers of buildings, uh, a lot of complexity in the buildings or other structures. Um, and then having that tied in with uh, you know, a vast array of volumetric effects, also they had to cover these very large areas. So it was uh, lots of uh, kind of planning and, and logistics in terms of uh, trying to put together so many things that had to be simmed in so many different layers. And then, of course, uh, as your later layers had to uh, depend on the previous ones, it's just that whole thing of uh, trying to organize that and keep it straight. So that's, uh, it, was, it was a lot of work. So. Hi, um, do you mind if I join you? I, there's. I wanted to ask you something. Yeah, I only um, got a minute. Hey, Pickle? No. We had a, a lot of extensive previews was done on the show uh, that we received. And uh, at the, uh, that point, you had all the, the choreography they had actually planned out for when what building tips into what building or uh, various things. And so the first part of it would just be going through and trying to do blocking on our side to make sure that we had uh, gotten the director's uh, vision for the, the the action that was going on in the scene. Whatever the largest structure or objects were that you were having to, to break up, uh, those would have to go through the demolition pipeline, which uh, the, the buildings themselves were all, most of them were picked out of uh, real buildings in downtown, others were things that had been modified or uh, changed a bit, but you'd have to have the buildings built to spec so that it would work with the uh, destruction uh, chopping gizmo. Uh, that would actually break the thing up into its small pieces. It would then go through kind of an effix, uh, effects rigging process to have all the uh, joint strengths and constraints uh, that glues the building back together uh, so that it essentially remains a cohesive whole. Then you'd have to then apply whatever previous animation had been done. That would have to be applied so if a building's actually falling over, that uh, that's initially actually supplied by uh, animation that we're doing, but then selectively uh, the parts of the building are released and turned dynamic, and uh, then those things being, actually crumble and you know look pretty. And uh, really at that point, then it's, it's really just getting those performances bought off on and getting those looking nice. And then uh, if other simulations around them, whether it's like uh, small debris and glass or the dust and volumetrics, all of those would be started on those buildings. Or if that building crashed into another one, then in a lot of cases you would then uh, sim that second building after the fact using the first one as a collision body. And uh, then again, like I so say, you just kind of keep stacking these things and working downstream to actually build up all the, the layers that were necessary. A bullet is, uh, is actually a, a good part of the pipe, um, but essentially, uh, um, this is, uh, I think, becoming more common, is taking the kind of the game engine physics uh, and being able to actually bring that into one of the uh, large packages. So in this case, it was Houdini, uh, but we uh, essentially uh, wrapped up bullet uh, into a, a plug-in in Houdini and then built a pipeline around that, um, and that, that eventually ends up being uh, everything from a lot of uh, well, the, just the things that actually chop up the geometry uh, and then glue them back together with the uh, joints and constraints, all of that is then set up to work with uh, basically how Bullet conceptualizes dynamics and uh, joins and constraints between objects. And so you, you basically end up with a series of plugins or uh, networks that, uh, that 
support the you know the basic bullet engine at that point. But that's uh, that was a big bullet was a big part of our uh, our process. In the beginning, we um, there was a phase for probably for like three months when we were unsure if we could even do this side of destruction. Um, and then that's why we went down to uh, using the uh, the bullet route. Um, but even even when we were developing it, obviously we were doing a lot of uh, development tests, the simulation tests, and it really took us like three months to even tell ourselves that, oh, maybe we can do this project with the route we, we took. So, um, yeah, there was definitely a phase where we were really scared whether we can even, you know, pull this off or not. There's usually one test that we run, which I think we happened around the third, the third month, where you know, it was a small building test that kind of fell over and it looked really uh, realistic when it fell down and then it hit the ground and it kind of squashed in half. Um, that, th those are the moments where we said, oh, wait a minute, maybe we can do this project after all. I think it's the complexity of the destruction and we have achieved that by um, considering the physical building structure within the model we were building. So we ran a lot of tests to try and collapse this bungalow model and to get that to look realistic, we first start with just chop the building up and let it collapse. And that looks kind of okay, but it doesn't look that realistic. And then, so what we ended up doing was that we actually made all the pillars within that uh, structure pretty close to what the physical you know, architecture would do. So we had these pillars running uh, vertically on the walls, and we had the roof supporting pillars, and these were all modeled precisely to what the real would, thing would do. And it would even set constraints on the wall to be a little bit stronger or the, the supporting structure to be stronger. And then you run a simulation and the roof would collapse fast because it's built that way and the, uh, the strength is weaker. So then you see some parts of the house go first, but you can tell that the, uh, the support structure is still like trying to hold on to it. So that, that kind of a detail in how we modeled it, how we constrained it, and how we rigged the, the dynamics really added to the, uh, the complexity of the simulation. Gordon!